Welcome to Biology for You. In this video, we are going to discuss Heart Start PCR. In this video, we are going to have uh, the basic idea of what exactly Heart Start PCR is and why it is important and what is the principle and process involved in this Heart Start PCR. So basically, as name indicates, it is the type of PCR. So basically, what is heart start PCR? Heart start PCR is a variant of PCR, that means it is a type of PCR. So what exactly is PCR is? So in order to understand heart start PCR, we need to know what is PCR. So PCR is a polymerase chain reaction, that means it is an artificial method of amplifying a portion of DNA in the laboratory. So, in order to perform many molecular biology and genetic engineering experiments, we generally go with the amplification of the DNA, quantification of the DNA, isolation of certain genes, isolation of certain encoding portions, identification of them. And pure, um, so, in order to do such processes, we generally go for PCR. PCR is the artificial amplification process of the DNA. So, basically, there are many kinds of PCR based on the uh, output we want. We will go for the type of PCR. So basically, uh, sometimes conventional PCR. So why it is important uh, to understand that? Uh, basically, uh, sometimes this conventional PCR is not enough to uh, promise the successful amplification of the DNA. That means sometimes the reaction will be uh, non-successful and the product will not form at all or sometimes it will happen uh, non-specific product will be formed instead of the target amplification so in the DNA uh, DNA sample we generally trigger the amplification of the certain portion of the DNA so what if the primers are bind to the non-specific portion of the DNA, non-targeted portion. That non-targeted portion will also be uh, amplified. So, these are the two complications we generally uh, come across while dealing with these PCR reactions. So, for the troubleshooting of such complications during the PCR process, we generally go with the heart start PCR. So, in order to ensure the successful PCR reaction and also in order to ensure the specific PCR product for these two reasons we generally go for the heart start PCR so it ensures the uh, successful PCR product which is highly specific to the target sequence so uh, what is the principle how exactly it works and who discovered it so basically this PCR heart start PCR was discovered by none other than the same scientist who discovered the PCR product so in the year of 1991 it got introduced by Carry Mullis and from 1992, the year of 1992, it got popularized. Many applications of hard start PCR got introduced. So, basically, what is the principle of this hard start PCR? Coming to that point. Uh, First, we should know what is PCR. In the PCR, we generally artificially amplify the DNA. So, uh, we need some of the essentials, some of the requirements for the PCR reaction to proceed. Like, we need a template DNA to be amplified. To, uh, uh, to amplify target portion in that template DNA, we need a template DNA. We need some DNTPs, which are building blocks for the DNA synthesis. We need a primer to initiate the sequence. DNA synthesis, we need Mg2 plus ions to aid the reaction, we need buffer and also we need enzyme called TAC polymerase which is the 
essential and primary requirement for the PCR, PCR reaction to proceed. That means the stack polymerase is responsible enzyme or it is a type of DNA polymerase to amplify the DNA. So, um, <clears throat> generally the stack polymerase and all other components of the PCR master mixture that means DNTPs primers, MG triplase, stack polymerase, and buffer template, all these are added into the reaction mixture and that will be placed as re this reaction tube in which the reaction mixture is there. That, that reaction tube is generally placed in the PCR machine before and the PCR re reaction will be initiated. So until the first denaturation step during the PCR cycle, that means uh, at high temperatures, uh, high temperatures are used for the denaturation of the template DNA in the PCR reaction. So the denaturation is the first step of the PCR reaction. After denaturation, primers will bind at one uh, at some temperature and after primer binding, the DNA will be synthesized at other temperature. So basically, at DNA, uh, so the denaturation will be the first step in the PCR reaction. Until this denaturation step starts, until the denaturation temperatures are reached, the temperatures of the PCR reaction or in the temperatures during the setup of the experiments are low. So during that period, there is a high possibility of non-specific binding of primers, non-specific amplification of the DNA by the DNA polymerase means happens. So generally during the experimental setup, setup, the temperatures are low and there is a chance of non-specific amplifications and due to the uh, due to some non-specific amplification, the target DNA may not amplify at all. So these are the complications generally come across during this PCR reaction. So in this hard start PCR, these experimental setup, uh, during the experimental setup, all these things will happen. So in this hard start PCR, what we do is, we will set up the experiment without adding a one ingredient, one selected in the ingredient. That means, uh, generally in the hard start PCR, the stack polymerase enzyme activity will be blocked somehow until the high temperatures are reached in the experiment. That means until the denaturation temperatures 93 to 94 degrees centigrade during the experiments are, experiment are reached, we somehow manage the uh, activity of the tag DNA polymerase so that the reaction will be stopped, will not be initiated until high temperatures of the denaturation are reached. So that is the basic principle to ensure the fidelity of the experiment. So that is how the hot start PCR will work but coming to the detail of the story how we will block the tag polymerase activity or how we will block the uh, <coughs> DNA synthesis until the denaturation uh, denaturation temperatures are reached in the experiment so basically will block the tag polymerase activity, polymerization by different methods that may be chemical or may be physical or may be antibody mediated. Sorry. How do we physically block the re reaction, reactivity of the tag polymerase? Generally, uh, for the physical blockage of the reaction, we generally use, <coughs> uh, sometimes we'll miss adding of the one ingredient in the reaction mixture. So, uh, if a one essential 
component of the PCR reaction mixture is not added in the reaction tube, then it will not start, it will not initiate the DNA synthesis, it will not start the uh, reaction until the last ingredient is added to the reaction mixture. So that is the basic process we follow in the physical uh, physical blockers of the reaction. So here generally what we do in the reaction tube, we are going to add all PCR ingredient except one. Mm, we may uh, we may choose tag polymerase, we may choose uh, primer. We can block these th these things aside and remaining all ingredients are added into the reaction tube and the last ingredient will also be added um, before we are going for the experiment uh, before we are going to place this reaction tube into the machine PCR machine so basi basically the last ingredient is added on top of the vaccine so after reaction mixture got fixed, master mix got fixed, uh, we are going to apply wax on it and on top of the on top of it, the last remaining ingredient will be added. So the last ingredient is blocked by the wax coat. So when the temperatures are high, then wax, wax will be dissolved and the last ingredient is above uh, is ready for the reaction to start so it allows the after denaturation temperatures are reached high temperatures are high temp high temperatures are reached this wax layer will be dissolved and now it is ready the last ingredient is ready for the initiation of the PCR reaction so that is how we generally physically block the uh, reaction until the denaturation temperatures are reached and this is the one of the oldest method and we can also use chemical blocking of the reaction so if we chemically block the tag polymerase activity, if we chemical chemically block the reaction to happen until the denaturation step is reached, denaturation temperatures are reached in the uh, PCR reaction, then it can also create environment to specifically amplify the targeted DNA portion. It will ensure the or increase the product of the PCR reaction. So. This chemical generally we use DMSO or formamide. These two, these two uh, chemicals generally DMSO stands for dimethyl sulfoxide. So, so these two chemicals are generally used to uh, increase the melting temperatures of the primers and the DNA templates. So melting temperatures as the melting temperatures are increased uh, the specific binding between the primer and the uh, template will happen. That means primers will go and ensure the binding with the targeted portion only highly complemented complementary uh, sequences will be identified or so these highly uh, specific uh, or highly complementary sequ sequences will be identified by, identified by the primers and they'll go and bind with these sequences which are meant meant for the amplification which are targeted for the amplification during the experiment so the only targeted portion only specific uh, portion of the DNA will be uh, simply uh, triggered for the amplification. So that is how these chemicals will help. The other enzyme generally used is UNG, uracil and glycosylase. So basically this uracil and glycosylase is the enzyme which degrades the uracil containing 
product of the PCR. That means uh, if there is any uh, uracil, presence of uracil uh, nucleotide in the DNA due to the previous uh, PCR experiment, maybe, uh, maybe because of the template and uh, that kind of PCR product or the DNA molecule will be degraded by the UNG or uracil glycosylase. This degrades the DNA which contains uracil base in it. So, the other application of UNG is basically it will also degrade the DNA, uh, DNA product or the uh, newly synthesized DNA. Uh, which is actually synthesized during the setup of the experiment. So, while the experimental setup, if any, uh, because of any reasons, the DNA synthesis got initiated, then that kind of product will be degraded by this uracil and glycosylase. It will degrade the DNA. This uracil uh, and glycosylase degrades the unwanted DNA during the experimental setup. And once after the denaturation temperatures are reached, this enzyme itself will be degraded because of this uh, thermosensitivity. So it is a thermolethal enzyme and during the experimental setup, uh, it will degrade the DNA, possible uh, synthesized, newly synthesized DNA. Once after this experimental setup has been carried, once after the denaturation uh, temperatures are reached, the engine itself will be degraded so that only specific portion of the DNA, target portion of the DNA will be amplified. So that is how we chemically or enzymatically block the reaction to happen until the denaturation temperatures are reached. So the other way of doing it is binding with the antibodies. So these antibodies are specifically binding with the stack polymerase. This stack polymerase will be bound, bounded by the antibodies and they will block the activity of the tag polymerase. So uh, they will block the uh, tag polymerase to initiate the synthesis of new strands. So here, by blocking the uh, tag polymerase, it will block the reaction to happen. And once the denaturation uh, temperatures are reached during the experiment, then these antibodies are act deactivated because antibodies are generally thermolethal. And now this DNA uh, tag polymerase is available for the reaction to proceed. So that is how antibodies or actinose are used for the hard start PCR. So once after the denaturation temperatures are reached, the engine is released from its blockage, either maybe physical blockage, maybe from chemical blockage or maybe from enzymatic or antibi uh, antibody blockage, it will release from the block so it is activated again during the denaturation uh, denaturation temperatures so engine the denaturation will happen the primers will bind to the target sequence and will start the amplification of new strands thereby number of molecules of the target sequence will be product so the basic the outcome of the experiment is very uh, success rate of the PCR product, product is ensured and followed by the specific uh, targeted portion will only be amplified using this hard start PCR. So that, this is what the basic idea of the hard start PCR. Hope you understand.